St. John Paul II and St. Marcel the Moderate on the meaning of Catholic. Brethren in Christ, Laudato Jesus Christus in Sequela. This is Timothy Flanders at the Meaning of Catholic. Jesus is King. Welcome to this Guild family stream. As we've been doing, the first part of this show will be public, free to the public. If you want the full show, you have to become a Guild member to support the Apostolate. Patreon.com slash Meaning of Catholic or Meaning of Catholic.com slash donate. So you can get the full treatment on this controversial topic. This series is, uh, and Guild members, I, I put the link to the full series of these talks and discussions about John Paul II and Marcel Lefebvre. And this whole series is an attempt to put into practice the hypothesis that is contained in my book. And that hypothesis being that there is a synthesis that God is creating in his providence against the errors of modernity since 1773 by bringing us through these different periods of the magisterium, the Pian magisterium from 1773 to 1958, and then the conciliar magisterium from 1958 to the present. And critical to those two schools of thought against modernity are these two figures, Marcel Lefebvre and John Paul II. And this series is an attempt to put into practice this, not only this hypothesis, but the Christian, the Christian principles of judgment, the principle, Christian principles by which we judge charitably and sympathetically and mercifully our fellow man, our neighbor, and men of the church. And so this, this series is meant to challenge the perceptions of many on both sides. Uh, so it's going to be controversial to everybody. Um, but as I said, the guild members, the, the full series is available to you at the link below, which has all of the, the whole playlist of all these full talks. So, uh, in our previous discussion, now we're going to get get to these God willing every week. Now uh, we had a brief hiatus for a few weeks, um, but in our first discussion, we started talking about our first discussion of this topic. That is, we started talking about why it is it is not correct to call John Paul II a phenomenologist. In order to do that, we started with the uh, introduction to Western philosophical problems. Talked about realistic philosophy nominalism, Augustine versus, Aqu versus Aquinas, Plato versus Aristotle. And we talked about a few of those things. Um, and so the first discussion was all about how modern philosophy in the West was sort of strangled in subjectivism, strangled and stranded in subjectivism. And what we're going to see is that the original Augustinian phenomenology is an answer to this modern philosophical problem. In the same way that Suarism was an answer to nominalism, phenomenology is an answer to what's called Cartesianism, or this modern subjectivism of the modern philosophical errors. Now, one thing I want to emphasize here, uh, and before we get into this, actually, let us let me just go through what, what we will talk about in this full show if you want to become a guild member, we'll talk about how uh, a, a Catholic preach teaches two different Jews in the 19th century. And so there's a good Jew and a bad Jew out, out of that. And and that's where we get these different things. We'll talk about that. Uh, Husserl, we'll talk about um, some of the basics of what phenomenology is. We'll talk about the difference between Lefebvre's France and Wojtyla's Poland, which I think is critical to understanding the two men. And then we'll talk more about his philosophical thought. Um, this is, as I said, this is Guild Stream. And so this is just a conversation. If you're new to the Guild, feel free to chat in at any time, any of your thoughts or questions, and we could just talk about those. This is just an open conversation. Um, so hopefully we can get through all this material today. If not, we'll get back to it next week and finish this out. Still to come, we are going to talk about Marcel Lefebvre's time in Africa 
and his time and the lead up to Vatican II and the immediate wake of Vatican II. And especially in this period, we're going to see the moderation of Marcel Lefebvre and how he is very moderate in his approach to all these different things that are going on. And it's really in the 1970s that he sort of gets a reputation for being a firebrand because of what he chooses to do in the 1970s, what he chooses to say in the 1970s. So we'll talk about all those things. We'll talk about criticisms of Lefebvre. I do think that, uh, full disclosure, I do think that there is there's certainly virtues, uh, obviously virtues in John Paul II, virtues in Marcel Lefebvre, but I, I do think that both men do have valid criticisms against them. So we'll talk about the the uh, strengths and weaknesses, I think, of both men. So um, before we get into all that, I wanted to just go back to some of our foundational principles here. Um, one is um, the reality of that Marcel Lefebvre was judged by the ecclesiastical authority. And as we discussed, his movement was judged to be schismatic. Um, but there has been a great deal of leniency given to him and his movement since 1988. And so there is even in the, I just read in the, um, Peter Zavald biography of Benedict the 16th volume two, he discusses how even after 1988, they were not in schism, but in a, in a regular situation. And this is where we talk about mercy and judgment in particular. These are the fundamental foundational principles of how we need to approach these things and how we should approach these issues and how we should approach each other. Um, we go to Matthew 5, 7, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. The reality is that when we're judging other people, we, we cannot um, be too harsh unless we want to be judged harshly ourselves. Judge not, lest ye be judged. The matter which ye meet out shall be meted to thee. That is the reality. And, the, and James 2, 13, as always, the epistle of James, always a kick in the teeth spiritually. He says, judgment without mercy to him that hath not done mercy. So this is why we need to judge each other and these figures with a great deal of mercy, because otherwise we ourselves will also be judged without mercy. And when we consider the possibility if Marcel Lefebvre were to be canonized in the future, as he is privately venerated by many of his followers, as we discussed last time, it is certainly permitted for a Catholic to privately, privately venerate any individual uh, as a in a private sense, not in, in a sense of trying to uh, assert with certainty that someone is a saint, you know, but just to believe or hope uh, that someone made it to heaven, nevertheless, even if they had some judgment against them, as is in the case of Lefebvre. But I want to highlight this verse here from James 2.13. It says, mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And this recalls the collect for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost, which let me read here. Um, the collect for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost says this, O God, who declarest thy almighty power, chiefly in showing mercy and pity. So there is this sense in which God himself is glorified in mercy, in his acts of mercy. And James says mercy triumphs over judgment, because the reality is that when we consider we consider the case of Joan of Arc, who was died excommunicated, but was privately so quasi privately venerated for centuries. And then she was later canonized. This is a triumph of mercy over judgment. Because the judgment against her, which was false, uh, was removed by mercy. And the point is that God is not, his glory is not detracted 
if the church were to remove an ecclesiastical judgment against an individual soul, because the glory of the church is the salvation of souls. The salvation of souls is always an act of mercy, because even the very creation of man is an act of mercy, which man did not merit, and his redemption is an act of mercy, and his salvation is an act of mercy. This, is, this would be a triumph of mercy over judgment. So it is not it does not detract from the glory and authority of the ecclesiastical hierarchy or the mystical body of Christ or Christ himself, but rather it exalts his almighty power that nevertheless he himself shows mercy to whom he shows mercy. And this is this is the principle of judgment. There, there are people, I, I, as I as I will show in this podcast, I am not a partisan of Marcel Lefebvre. I am not an apologist for him. As I said, I do think that he is, uh, he does have valid criticisms against him and his movement. But I can't fail to see the harsh, the harshness and the strictness with which he is judged, which in many cases unfairly, I believe. And I, I am afraid of judging anyone too harshly, lest I myself be judged. We need to see this triumph of mercy over judgment. And that is what we intend to do here in, the, in, this, in this series, is mercifully, sympathetically looking at each individual. And that is the rule, the principle of judgment that we're trying to put into practice here. Because often the followers of Lefebvre want to be very merciful to Lefebvre, but they want to be very harsh with John Paul II. And then the followers of John Paul II want to be merciful with John Paul II, but harsh with Lefebvre. But I'm saying that we need to be consistent with our principles and be merciful to all. And as we said in the very first broadcast, the judgment that we make is one of charity where we think the best of everybody unless we have complete evidence of, to the contrary and so what we'll look deeper into this we'll look at all these different aspects of their lives and we'll try to put this into practice so let's get into further into the topic of we talked about how western philosophy is stranded in the subjective and the issue is that Aristotomism was inadequate to rescue modern man from relativism because he was trapped inside his head, trapped inside his subjective experience, which was trapping him and cutting him off from the reality of the real, of, of what, we, what we talked about, how realistic philosophy is the only thing that can be allowed to be used by the church only realistic philosophies. So, so let's talk about what happens in the 19th century. So F Father Franz Montano, he's a Catholic priest, and he teaches the very basics of Aristotelian psychology. So Aristotelian psychology, we, we talked about the, the will and the intellect, the passions, things that Aristotle perceives in the subjective, but he just does not actually uh, complete the subjective uh, exploration of the reality of the subjective. So he has the philosophical method, which does not allow him to go deeper. 